Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Do any of these statements sound familiar? I'm not sure I can do this again. Maybe all the good ones are just taken. Maybe I'm just not relationship material. I'm really wary of even believing there is someone right out there for me. And does anyone ever tell the truth anymore? I mean, if this is you and you relate to these statements, it's all too common as a wary dater to begin the vetting process before you even get to know someone, especially after you might have experienced multiple disappointments. So you want to check all your boxes before you take the time to gather enough data to make that kind of decision. And you also you also collect that data within a pre-thought out set of standards that can eliminate a potential partner's chances before enough information has a chance to even come forth. So you might say like, well, there are just certain things I will never be able to tolerate, or I know what I want. I can tell right away if that person's available or if my most important requirements don't show up within the first date, then why waste my time? Or I just don't have the patience or time anymore to fool around. Like this is real. And I hear so many, you know, conversations in your heads when I talk to you, this is what you're saying to yourself. And those kinds of pre-biases are likely to result in pre-defeats. It's just true because it takes a while to open up and really get to know someone. I mean, most people withhold important aspects of themselves until they feel more secure and comfortable. And if you stay open to the possibilities before you judge too soon, you give yourself time to know more about someone before making that premature decision. And I always tell my clients that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. And you have to do something, what I call data dating, where you collect data and information to see if your biases and preconceived notions are valid. Or is it just fear from the past experiences causing you to judge too fast in order to protect yourself from getting hurt again? And sometimes you may not even know the answer to that. You know, like you just become so protective of some of the things that have happened over the years. So what what are we really talking about here? We're talking about trust, not just trust of another person, but really it's about trusting yourself to make a good decision. And when you don't trust, it's, it's really fear that ends up getting in the way and it becomes your love shield. So you may want a loving and secure relationship, but you are also scared that you're going to get hurt again. So what you want is also what you fear and what you fear is what you want. And that's when people just plateau and they stay the same. But, you know, childhood trauma and unresolved issues, biases, prejudging, cynicism, pessimism, all those things are barriers to potential partners who don't want to inherit a mess they did not create. So too many people carry their scars into each new relationship, hoping that their new partners will somehow be the healers of those past heartbreaks. And we all know if you don't do a work and you don't break those patterns, it's like a broken record and you start attracting the same thing over and over again. There was a beautiful client and actually her her name is Leslie and you can find her on episode 323. She's one of my success stories. And this was exactly the case with her. I mean, she had lost her husband, but even before that had some kind of toxic relationships. And in her childhood, there was a lot of trauma and, you know, the theme was being heard and really being seen. And, you know, by the time I got to her, she, she saw me on a workshop and she had her boxing gloves on and she was vetting these guys, you know, so hard that no one was good enough right? Like there were no great men out there and her town sucked and like everything was wrong. (laughs) And I said, well, as long as you keep believing that, then you're right. Like that's all you're going to see. And I always say that. And, you know, we started working together. She came to one of my retreats and it was just eye opening for her because really what she had to do was let go of all of that and really start just playing on the playground. I said, forget the guys for a second. Let's just 
you got to learn how to let go. She was so pent up. Her energy was so like serious. And she was like a lawyer dating, you know, I mean, she was a lawyer, but she was dating like a lawyer. I'm like, that's not sexy. You have to like really, you know, put in the the time to smile and get to know people and date people you normally wouldn't date because your type isn't working for you. So she did it. And with reluctance, I mean, I remember the first date she had with a guy she wasn't attracted to and didn't have like all the qualifications she was looking for, but it was really like an aha moment for her because it was one of the best dates she's ever had. And she's like, I never would have given this guy a chance. And you can listen on my episode where she tells the story that had she didn't have like me in her head saying, well, Kimmy will kill me if I don't go out with this guy, this, this beautiful relationship that she attracted that she is in right now wouldn't have happened. And that is because she had to learn how to let go and really trust again. And it's scary. I mean, learning to trust yourself and others to find love again does take work. Absolutely. And every relationship can create elation, scar, repair, transformation, deepen, and and, I mean, all that stuff that goes with it. But it's what you do with these experiences and the attitude that you have moving forward is what determines the success of your future relationships and the people you attract in your own lives. So with me today is a beautiful soul who is going to help me discuss how you can trust others, trust yourself, and trust the universe to attract love in your life. She is a personal growth coach, author, podcaster, and creator of Flow Dreaming. I love this so much. An energy technique for manifesting, healing, and growing inner emotional strength. Her books and podcasts have been used worldwide to transform people's inner emotional landscapes as well as their external lives. Her latest book is called Stuff Nobody Taught You, 40 Lessons from Me School to Help You Stop Being Miserable and Start Feeling Amazing. Previously, she worked for Louise L. Hay for a decade and created HayHouseRadio.com. And you can find her at FlowDreaming.com or through her podcast, Flow Dreaming. Welcome, Summer McStravick. Thank you, Kimmy. That was a wonderful um, lead up to our conversation, our discussion today. Right. And no, and I know you and I work so much with, you know, people in different ways, but, you know, obviously the similar themes keep, you know, showing up that makes people get just stuck in our life. And that's why I love what you're doing so much with, I know you do coaching and stuff like that, but just this flow dreaming is brilliant. Um, and I want to hear more about that, but before we get into it, I do want to hear how you, how you got into it and you can like share a little bit more about flow dreaming as you're telling your story too. Yeah. I mean, how I got into what I do today and, yes. and the teaching yes. and the manifesting and all of that. All, all of it. <laughs> oh my God. Your whole accident. story. <laughs> it was an accident. I never meant to be a woo-woo person, honest to God. Um, <laughs> I grew up in a family of intuitives and psychics and oh, herbalists and mm-hmm, long background. So, um, it, you know, I was the Michael J. Fox of, I'm not going to be like my mother. I am not going to do any of that woo-woo stuff. I'm going to go into publishing. So I went to a good school and I got a good degree and I started working at a good publishing company. But of course that publishing company ended up being uh, the one that Louise Hay started. So I was right back in the world where I belong. So I have been uh, teaching and working ever since with energy and with emotion. And really, I started um, teaching people about flow dreaming. Seriously, I started teaching them in about 2005. So I'm heading wow. heading up on 20 years now. Um, it's a practice where we really change who we are emotionally. We practice emotions, actually. Um, and we practice the the energy of those emotions. So there is some psychological, as a therapist, you'd appreciate that aspect to it, the emotional reconditioning, if you will. But then the other aspect of it is people can feel you when you enter a room. Like we can all agree on that. There's something that exudes from you. And who knows exactly what it is, you know, the nonverbal communication, but there's this, there's a there's a presence. And for me, that's the energy that I teach people about. And we use this practice called flow dreaming as the technique to reshape and change that part of ourselves. So I think that answered it somewhat. Oh my God. Yeah, no. And, and obviously we'll get into it more, but yeah. so was there like a personal journey that 
led you to doing this that, you know, inspired you to do it or just because of like your family? I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> oh, um, so many, this is a very different side story, but many years ago, um, it was the year 2000, <laughs> back in the long, far away, far away land <laughs> of the year 2000, when we all survived Y2K, um, I was uh, in charge of a literary magazine that I had created. And I really, really wanted it to do well. Remember, I said I didn't ever want to do any of the woo-woo stuff. I was going to, you know, do literature and all that. Um, however, uh, because of my upbringing and exposure, I would call my mom on the phone every day and say, my my magazine is failing, mom. I can't seem to sell any advertising. We've got to do some manifesting around this. We've got to pull this thing out of the dumpster fire. So we ended up kind of both of us falling into what I just call the flow now. Um, it just felt like a place that was sort of expanded. It was outside of time, outside of space. It's it's the same feeling as if when you're daydreaming and you mm -hmm. realize I was someplace else. I don't know where I was, but you sort of snatch yourself out of it and you realize that there was some greater someplace happening here. And in fact, the outside world kind of fuzzed around you. How many times do we drive and we're daydreaming and we're just like, did I... I guess I got here somehow. I don't remember yeah. turning on any of those streets. <laughs> That's a so, good metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of began from that. And um, I refined it and began practicing it and, and, and asking a lot of questions. Um, what is this? Uh, what quantum theory and, and quantum consciousness is involved in this process? And how is this different than affirmations? How is it different mm -hmm. than hypnosis? Um, and eventually I realized it's kind of its own little beast and it's, um, it's a, a three-part uh, technique that we bring together and, and do, but um, I've been teaching it. it. It it rapidly took over my life after that. Yes, I spent a good 10 years in publishing, um, but then I had written two books by then and it had just kind of taken off like wildfire. So <laughs> it took over and that's why I teach it today. I love it too, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like I was dragged in. I was not dragged in. I made a promise to the life in the universe. Yes. All right. I am ideally situated to teach this, though I will. It's so cool. And I like that it's different than just like regular woo woo manifestation stuff that you said, you know, like you, I think I feel like, and you and I were talking about this. I, I feel like you meet where, like the practical and the woo kind of meet like in the way that you teach it. And and I think that's so cool. Um, I, I wonder because like, obviously like you have this journey professionally, but did you incorporate it in your own life even to like manifest your own love? <laughs> well, that's another story. Not really. I met my husband when I was 15. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, and I'm not going to tell you how old I am now, but we've been together a mighty long time. So <laughs> met him in high school, never expected to even get married. So my mom was mm. twice divorced and it was just never not a good situation. And I just said, I'm never going to get married. So I dated the poor guy for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> before and I'm like okay I guess you're not leaving and we're not going to grow apart so uh eventually we married and so we're still together oh, today so I've never really had to use my techniques in that regard I have for certain times during because marriages you know long long relationships for yeah. me sometimes feel like uh, you're having a series of small relationships within that long one that's because so you're going true. Through, yeah. Yeah. You're going through different eras and times. Mm -hmm. There's the child raising time. There's the, the empty nesting time. You, you become different people in each one of them. And sometimes you're right together and sometimes you're wide apart. So I've used some of my own stuff for relationship repair, um, communication, helping myself really speak my truth. In fact, that's a flow dream that I've put out there. Like you need to be able to state your needs very clearly. If you can't, then this is going to fall off a cliff. So let's learn how to do it. So that, that in a way is I'm, I'm kind of like you, right? I, I call yeah. it, you have to do the action and I call it the pre-action and the pre-action is the non-physical work or the guidance. And the action is, okay, now you got that, do something with it. <laughs> Just like you would put on a red dress yeah. and, as you mentioned in your story. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, that's, that's awesome. And you're so right because it's almost like you have to learn how to date your partner over and over and over again at different phases, you, you know? You and do. so using some of that, I think is so cool. And I love this different subjects that you have. I mean, if you go to flowdreaming.com, you'll see like she has all these different like subjects, but, but just like 
that we all face with, as humans, you know, and yes. that there is a subject for each of these things. So obviously we're talking about trust. How yes. would you, yeah, like how would you say that you could incorporate using that with trust and, you know, maybe like if there's some techniques or walk us through like what that looks like? Yeah. So, you know, when you were talking about dating and putting yourself out there. Yeah trust becomes the very first thing that you kind of encounter. I either trust myself to be seen out there or I don't. And so I break down trust actually into three different categories, right? There is trust of self, trust of others, and trust of say the universe. And in a nutshell, what it looks like is when you trust yourself or when you don't have trust in yourself, because as we move through life, I always say our trust gets a little bit broken. It's like a teacup. You use it a lot, it gets chipped. And you have to repair it and you have to keep repairing. If you're not living well, you're not breaking things. If you're not breaking mm -hmm. things, then you're obviously not living because you're holding yourself. Trust is one of those things that's constantly being broken, which I know people don't like to hear. They're like, oh no, I've had enough broken trust. I'm like, great, let's figure out where because that's the area we want to repair first. Trusting yourself is, um, I trust my decisions. I trust the kind of person that I'm attracted to will be good and healthy for me. I trust that I won't have a bad relationship like X, Y, Z, the one I had before. I trust that if I'm assessing somebody, I will be able to really know and, and let myself, you know, have that sense of, I believe what your decision-making is. A lot of us don't have that because we've made poor decisions in the past and we don't really trust our own self. So we instead push people away from us because we don't trust ourselves. We can't make a decision on them that we would trust. So we just kind of X them out of the picture altogether. Mm. Trust of others is the obvious one. My last partner cheated on me. Um, my parents never had a good relationship that I could follow. When you're talking about trusting others, I, I feel it goes back even further. A lot of people that I have worked with, um, they started mistrusting others the very first time they weren't picked for the dodgeball team or um, mm -hmm. had to be the last one chosen, you know, in the schoolyard for the PE. And they realized, and then they didn't get the invitation to that other girl's birthday party. And they think to themselves, well, people don't really like me. Why would a partner like me? Other people, I'm, I'm a lone wolf. I have to just go on my own. And that's where the beginning of not trusting others became, not their latest and last relationship, but there's a long string of it. And you guys know who you are. We're the independent solo people. We are the ones who get everything done in our lives because we depend on ourselves, not other people. The third area of trust that um, I find gets broken is, I call it trust of the universe, but really it comes out in, it almost slips out like we don't notice. I will never find a partner. There's nobody here for me. This is not my life or mm -hmm. my lifetime. Uh, for me to be, you know, happily with anybody. I've tried. There's just nobody out there. They're all too old. They're all married already. They're all this. They're all, I live in the, like you said, I live in the wrong town. Mm. It's sort of like, well, when you tell the universe or God or however you want to say it, um, that you really believe that it's not there for you anymore in the cards and you've just given up. I'm like that is the ultimate power leak. I use the mm -hmm. word power leak a lot in my work. Because that's something you have no control over. You have just given the greatest authority to something completely outside of you that you can't budge or move. It's like divine. So as long as you're holding on to that, you're going to be perfectly content explaining to yourself why you are not loved and cared for the way that you want to be. So when I'm talking with somebody, I'm like, which of those areas feels the most creaky and brittle right now? And most of us are like all three or one or two, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, you have to kind of figure it out. But that for me becomes the starting place of great. So how do, do you want to rebuild that trust? And if so, we got we to get to work on this. It's not just going to happen by itself because right now you don't have it and you're not looking to rebuild the trust. Are you ready to do that? And boom. I have the um, energetic emotional equivalent of putting on a tight red dress. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I so. wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. Like the, mm -hmm. how do you use kind of the emotional piece incorporated right. within that? Yeah. So the thing that I love about my practice, um, everybody has their own spiritual practice or personal self-care practice or manifesting practice. For me, 
flow dreaming is either emotional reconditioning if you don't have any woo-woo part of you, but if you have the woo-woo part of you, then it's a megaphone to spirit. And when you go into it, and so flow dreaming, I'll just tell you briefly, um, it, it takes these three things together, guided daydreaming. So mm -hmm. we're daydreaming into a, a space. We're kind of using our imagination to disconnect. And I call it connecting into the greater whole. So it's like, uh, it's like your computer is always checking for email in the background, right? It just kind of does it. We just all assume like, and then we don't even think, wow, how magical is that right now you could be, you know, 20,000 miles away, send an email and I get it less than a second later. It's almost mm -hmm. like magic, right? Mm -hmm. I say we as beings also have that ability to kind of check into something greater than ourselves, like magic in the background happens all the time, built into us. And so out comes the sense of, well, that's what daydreaming is, where we are temporarily going someplace else and and, and not realizing we're, we're even there. Now, most of the time that just happens to us, it's like a default mechanism or a default. It's like dreaming at night. You're not in control of it. It's just going on. What happens if you start to take a little bit of power or conscious awareness there? It's like lucid dreaming at night when you wake up in your dream and you're like, yeah, I can go flying now or whatever. We do the same thing with um, guided daydreaming. We stay aware that we're going into that state. Now mm. you couple that with um, strong, powerful emotion. So I practice emotion like they are big fat crayons in a box. Every emotion is going to do something different for us. We just have to figure out which ones we want to create more of or, or you know, color with. So in this case, if I'm trying to create more trust, the emotions that I'm going to start practicing and think of it like you've heard studies that if you do meditation, you're actually opening up new neural pathways. There's neuroplasticity that becomes involved. The same is true for your emotional self. Most of us, though, are relying on the outside world to give us permission to feel things. When somebody says I'm attractive, then I'll feel attractive. When somebody flirts with me, then I'll know that, oh, I must be being seen. We're waiting for permission from other people all the time when really we just want to feel a certain way. I want to feel yeah. seen. I want to feel attractive. I want to feel loved. And I'm like, great. For a while, just don't ask anybody else to give you that feeling or to give you permission to have that feeling. That's a power leak please have that feeling inside yourself right now. Well, how, why? I have no reason to feel it. I'm like, exactly, exactly. I don't want you to have a reason because every time you're looking for a reason, you're giving your power away to outside people and outside circumstances. You really have no reason or want to make you feel the way you want to feel. So let's go practice it. Do you want to feel fully embodied? Like, I love this body that I'm in. I'm excited to share it with the world. Maybe I want to make a few improvements here and there on it because we all do. But, you know, basically, I'm so dang grateful for this thing. I love this body that I'm in, that it gives me breath and life every day, that it even lets me love and share. And, oh, God, it does so many amazing things. So what we're doing here is we're creating a feeling of, of body self-awareness mm. and absolute love for ourselves. That's just one example, right? You might also create an example of, I am so seen by a real partner who even now is desperately just as desperately as me looking around trying to find me and someday we're going to sit together and we're going to laugh and we're going to joke about how we were both feeling exactly the same and then wow you know finally we encounter one another and now you're having the emotion of i've encountered you it's well, i've seen you you found me I, we were both looking weren't we silly all those months we are years we were thinking that we weren't there how silly we were here we are Right. So what we're doing now is we're creating an emotion of, of connection and it's always been, and it was always going to be. And almost by saying how silly we're, we're recognizing that our previous belief, our lack of trust was kind of a silly thing to get into. So anyway, that's a little bit about the emotion. Then the third part, because I don't want to spend the whole time talking about you know what this is. The third part is flow itself. And flow is, um, oof, I could, I could, talk about it on so many different levels, but think of it basically as most things have a flow of existence, the arrow of time, right? We're born and we grow older and eventually pass on. The earth is flowing around the sun and it's it's going in a perfect path with no resistance. It's, it's never gonna turn around and go backwards. Mm. I'm not gonna get any younger. There's a sort of alignment, you could say, to everything we know. And this is where I get into more of the woo-woo world, right? Um, as beings, we also have this kind of alignment or this 
personal journey or growth that we get more and more aware of. I say when you're practicing your emotions and your um, daydreaming, you kind of release into what I call this flow state, which is a place that feels outside of everything. And it's an intimately and intensely connected. And whether or not you feel the flow or not, it, it's, a, it's icing on the cake. You can just do the emotional work if you want to. So repairing trust, to go back to your question, starts with, I have felt my trust is broken. And the way that that is manifesting itself in my life is I'm putting up shields. I'm keeping myself protected. If you have something broken inside, of course, you're going to have a wall up to keep it safe. Of course. So what are we going to do? We're going to start working on, I trust myself. I make great decisions. Yeah, I've had some partnerships that were really educational for me and stuff that I took from that um, that lead me now into a better space, a more knowing space. And so I'm going to feel that about myself over and over and become it. So I always say practicing emotions is just like going to the gym. You go to the gym, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. curl your biceps, they're going to get strong. You practice these new emotional perceptions of yourself, like literally practice them. You will shift your awareness of who you are. And when you start shifting who you feel you are, people outside, you're going to see that. It's a, you're, you're a shining light and they're going to say, oh, you look strong. You look powerful. You look like you trust yourself. You're hot. <laughs> you're sexy. I want to get to know you. Like you've said, you don't bring your broken pieces to other people and say, fix me. Yeah. Show them who you are. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for walking us through <laughs> that whole process is so awesome. No, I mean, I think again, like this is what people need are these like tangible ways that people could overcome trust issues. And, you know, what's, what's really awesome about everything that you shared is that you're really attacking it from a place of having empowerment within, you know, it's not yes. like relying to your point, not relying on somebody else, something else to build the trust. And when you focus on yourself, you also are more grounded and more present. And that's where attraction happens too. You know, when you are so settled within yourself, it's so attractive to see someone comfortable with where they're at. And then the other people will trust you. That's what's mm -hmm. so crazy about the energetics, like what you were saying. We yeah. feel each other. And so a lot of times it's just on a subconscious level, but you know, when you meet somebody who's anxious and not trustworthy, you see it riddled in their body. I call it leaking. It leaks everywhere. <laughs> and when you are settled, that also leaks, you know, this, this presence, this comfort. So it makes other people feel comfortable too. And you know, yeah. the other thing, you said that is really cool is the visualization of things and not only like you're visualizing, but then you're embodying a certain feeling. And, yeah, you know, I think you and I speak such the same language about the emotional intelligence piece. It's so crucial to be able to access the emotion so that you can really communicate how you're feeling. And then that in turn allows more emotional intimacy, like when you're first meeting somebody. So this step is Ha it has to happen. You can't just throw, you know, kind of trust into the wind and saying, oh yeah, like I'll work on it. But what does that really mean? And you just made it very like concrete. So I, I love that. I mean, do you ever deal with resistance around that? And, and how do you work with people who have that? Oh yeah. Resistance. I mean, I was so gonna... think about, yeah. Okay. Think about flow. What's the opposite of flow mm -hmm. resistance, right? It's their yeah. to go together. So when you're acknowledging, I want to say, say you want to walk into a date and you want to feel the emotions you're practicing are, it is flowing. It's very easy for me to show up as who I am. Um, I'm, I'm coming in with very little resistance to this date, but in your heart, what you're feeling is dunk it, dunk it, dunk it, dunk it. Yeah. Oh my God. I'd rather be any place but here right now. <laughs> Why am I doing this? This is going to be a horrible thing. Just like the last, <laughs> Okay. So you, you have these, almost these two different feelings going on. One is the desire. I want the flow. I want the energy open and clear. I want to walk away feeling like whether or not this was the right person for me. I just feel like I was just, I had a beautiful, wonderful time because I enjoyed my own company and I kind of enjoyed theirs, right? Or yeah. the resistance will throw itself up and I'll ask a question of that resistance. What are you bracing for? So most of us, I use the word bracing a lot. Mm. When we're bracing for something, we're anticipating lack. 
We're anticipating yeah. it not going well. We're anticipating um, a disconnect. We're anticipating something not fulfilling our desires, really. So we get prepared for that. When we're preparing for something or bracing, you can even feel it physically in your body, like brace for impact. Right. We stiffen. Okay. We stiffen and protect. So you're going into something and you're feeling this bracing or you're feeling this resistance. You have just opened a divide. And I know the divide feels like it's protective, but it's it's protective in the way that people will come and they will bounce right off of you. Energetically, they'll come and they'll bounce right off. So like, and even the things I'm talking about, it's not even just with dating. I, I, I tell people who are going in for job interviews, all right, you're going to walk into that room and the person sitting on the other side of the desk, they're, they're going to be curious about you. They're going to be open to learning. If you're bracing, like I've got to do it right, they're going to hit that and it's going to bounce back. And I say, you know, the energy we walk into a room with is like a neon sign hung around our neck that we don't know is blinking. So spend a little time figuring out what am I, what am I showcasing before you go and talk to anybody and see what that energy feels like inside of you. And if it's, again, if it's bracing or resisting, or, I mean, I've been an employer for a, a long time, 20 years. If a person is interviewing with me and I can feel from them, they don't want this job. They're being forced to go on this interview because they haven't gone on an interview mm -hmm. in like three months and they're desperate and their spouse is getting mad at them for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I could just feel it. And meanwhile, their mouth is like, oh, I'd love to work here. I'm like, no, you would not. Nope. I, nope. I, I could. Nope. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I we're going that. in and we're, and we're changing our emotional endpoint inside of ourself. It's another yeah. word use for it. Well, and also, you know, it, as you alluded, the resistance is also fear. And oh, also yeah. it's like the fear of failure, really. Like I, and, and this is how I see it, just even from a psychological standpoint, when you don't trust, there's also these feelings of not being good enough, given like what happened, you know? And so why would you expose yourself or put yourself in a situation where you're not going to be good enough or fail? And so what I love about what you're saying is that, you know, just preparing yourself for that, like walking yourself through like what to expect and how you can overcome that. But so much of it is mindset, right? Like if you know that you're going to walk in with resistance, with a scarcity mindset, then you won't be good enough. Things won't work out. But when you look at it from a state of abundance and learning and positivity, that's when you, you get that. And I know all the stuff you and I are talking about, like in theory sounds really good, <laughs> Yeah. but then, yeah. you know, but how, how it's like the, how to, like, how do people really kind of overcome, especially, um, and I don't know if you ever see this, I see it showing up obviously with people I work with, they'll, they'll go like two steps forward and then maybe one step back, you know, and then they'll, they'll like, they'll be like a sticking point. Do you have any techniques or things that you help people with to kind of get over that hump, so to speak? Yeah. Yeah. So I call this lack thinking, right? Lack thinking, huh? that, that's the, the, the general genre that I yes. have for this. I'm going to meet this person, but I don't feel good about my body. So I'm going to stay a little bit withheld and I'm going to kind of shut things down. My lack thinking is mm -hmm. impacting the potential of this relationship before it even gets off the ground. Uh, my lack thinking is preventing me from even wanting to try to meet someone. And I say things to myself like, well, I don't even know where to go to meet somebody and I'm not going to go on apps and there's no place to meet them. I'm like, that is lack thinking at its finest. We're looking for ways to justify our own inner protection and our feeling that what we want will not be there or will not be available to us for some reason. That's the very first thing that we're wanting to address. What is the opposite of lack thinking? Everything we want is there. I'm like, that, that feels foreign to you, right? That feels like I'm just making that up. I'm just trying to make you feel good. But you have this choice at any given time, which one do I want to believe in? Mm -hmm. You get to pick. And people say, well, yeah. the one that was proven to me was the lack because yes. that's all I've ever had. And I'm like, great. You keep reinforcing that because you keep believing, you keep reinforcing it and you're making it true. So of course, yes, it has been true for you because you've been reinforcing it. I'm asking you to recognize, yes, that's been true, but now I've got to believe something totally different for a while and see what happens. Because until you make that shift, you are going to be 
reinforcing it and it's going to stay true for you and very real. I'm not saying your experience is not real. It's been very real. And I completely changed that. So for me, that's the first real big piece in breaking down resistance. And the two mm -hmm. steps forward, one step back is, um, so like you, I, I believe in action and, and what I call yeah. pre-action, right? The non-physical aspect of things. Um, it's like walking. It takes two legs to go fast. Yes. Otherwise you're just hopping. Some people only do physical stuff. They only do action oriented stuff. And then they kind of feel hollowed out, emptied inside, purposeless, et cetera. Some people only do the interior stuff and they're dreamy and they're always hoping. And someday maybe it'll happen for me, but I know I've not stepped out my door to meet somebody in six years. So yeah. Right. So I'm like, we have to find which side are you on and bring me to some middle ground. I want to see both happening. So, you know, like you would tell them, here's what you got to do. We got to get you out and take the baby steps of, you know, look up and, and look around and see if anybody's looking at you, right? That So that's an action that you take, but coupled with that, there's that little fear, that little yeah, oh of fear going, dunk -a -da -dunk -a -da, you know, so acknowledge, I feel fearful, but I'm going to shift my emotional state right now. I'm going to purposely feel something else. And that is a skill that sometimes has to be learned because mm -hmm. no one ever it teaches is. us to yeah. do it. We're always just told, you know, react appropriately, behave emotionally appropriately. You can't act all happy and expectant if you have no prospect for knowing that it's going to go that way. Why would you do that? Because I want to kind of tell the universe that, right? I want yeah. the world to know that this is what I expect to receive. That's what I want flooding out for me. And I tend to find that the world aligns to what we're giving out, you know? So change what you're giving out and let new things start aligning to that. And then it's up to you to go past those little courage hurdles a bit at a time. You, 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 you know, I call it tiny bites, like yeah. <laughs> tiny bites. And I, I am always talking about the value of brave actions, um, not just with dating, uh, but in, in all areas of your life. And like, you need to take some brave actions. I want you to wear the shirt that shows off what you think are your pudgy arms. And so you never wear it, but it's your favorite shirt. You need to wear it. <laughs> all week long, everywhere you go. And you'd say, well, that's silly, but it's not because what you're doing is you're encountering your own self-awareness and reminding yourself, I love this shirt and who cares what people think about my arms? So little tiny brave actions add up and strengthen those emotional muscles until you can do a bigger action. I'm going to sign up for a singles cruise. <laughs> Right. right exactly and it doesn't feel like a big brave action anymore because you leveled yourself up to that yes yes and it's so important to to also know that each of us are different you know in the way that we have to go through this journey too because it is like you said every people have different pacing people have different experiences and also to be gentle on yourself like if you're finding all of this stuff overwhelming, then maybe you need to practice one thing for a month instead of two weeks or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that all of the stuff that we're talking about is just so important in the way that we show up and the way that we express ourselves, but really like for the first time, realizing how important you are, you as an individual, because I work with so many people who are like helpers, givers, caretakers. And I think that's why you don't learn the language of the emotional intelligence, what we're talking about, because you're so used to taking care of others and being in tune to others, but not what's in your body. Like even knowing the emotion that you're having going in on a date is like just giving that language is so important. So I just, I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. I was going to ask you for parting words of wisdom, but you, there's so, so many parting <laughs> words of wisdom that you I'll have. Give one. Okay, I'll give okay. one. Okay. And, um, and let for, people know where they can find you. Oh gosh. Okay. Yes. So we talked about the trifecta of trust. A good right. uh, journaling exercise after this would be write down what's my relationship to the universe source or God? Do I believe that I have all the ability right in the world to be loved and adored and that my right person is in fact here for me? Do I believe it's being withheld from me or do I believe that it's really a possibility and not only a possibility that, but it's, it's right around the corner. You're examining your relationship with the biggest power to possibly give or take things away. Second, do I um, trust others? 
do I believe that I'm wanted? Do I believe that people want to include me? Do I believe that there are good people who will try to take care of me and will show me their true heart and be good? Third, do I trust myself? Do I trust my own decision-making? Do I trust my own ability to choose a good relationship? If you journal on each of those three, it's going to really come out which one you want to start practicing a different way of being within. Because the one that's the most broken is the one that you're sending the most lack thinking out into the world with. And that might be part of what you call your love shield. Yeah. So that's what I would suggest. Beautiful. Beautiful. And where can everyone find you? Okay. Uh, flowdreaming.com. It's flow F like Frank dreaming.com. Um, I have a ton of these flow dreams that I kind of discussed what they were, but think of them for a minute, like guided meditations, but there's no meditating involved, right? Cause it's based on daydreaming. I'm going to bring you into these rich emotional states, finding your life partner, uh, goddess power, feeling um, beautiful as I am. That's another one I have, which is like, I love my insides and I love my outsides. We're practicing all of these emotional states. I also have a podcast called Flow Dreaming, which is, I think, another really good free resource for people to get more of this um, education and way of thinking. So the podcast and the website. And last, I have an app on your phone. It's called Flow Dreaming as well. And there's a free tutorial and some free flow dreams that you can actually download and start practicing and working with. So. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Summer, I so enjoyed this conversation. We Again, we could go on and on <laughs> between the two of us. So yeah. thank you so much. Thanks, Kimmy. It's been wonderful talking with you. And thank you for joining me today. You listening. Of course, this has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kimmy Seltzer. And, you know, remember, it's all about building confidence. It's all about making connections, finding love. It's all about you. And when you do that, that's when other people will connect with you too. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. And if you are having challenges around trust and are finding yourself vetting your dates too hard, or you're riddled with fear to be open to love again, book a private call with me to help you with some of these trust issues and plan to overcome what is now your love shield. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now.